The name of George Washington claims a place in our American Masonic history. As the father of our country, he is a source of pride to every American Freemason, and we are proud to call him a brother in our time-honored fraternity. He was raised to the sublime degree of a Master Mason in Lodge No. 4 of Fredericksburg, Virginia, on August 4, 1753. On December 20th, 1788, Brother Washington was elected the first worshipful master of Alexandria Lodge No. 22. It was during the Revolutionary War that the young Marquis de Lafayette came to America from France and joined General George Washington's army for the Battle of Brandywine in 1777. The affection each man held for each other as friends and brothers was legend. The American cause had become Lafayette's cause. The legacy that developed through this affection led to the presentation of a special Masonic apron at Mount Vernon in August of 1784. It was made of white satin and hand embroidered by Madame Lafayette. This apron has become a study in symbolism. Symbols are silent emblems having meaning only when interpreted, and based on the unique character of the interpretation process, it is also understood that no symbol has an absolute meaning. For example, the apron border colors of red, white, and blue are the national colors of both the United States and France, and the colors of our national flag. In masonry, the color red is a symbol of courage, white for innocence, and blue for fidelity. The lambskin, or white leather apron, is an emblem of innocence and the badge of a mason, more ancient than the golden fleece or Roman eagle, more honorable than the star and garter, or any other order that could be conferred upon me at this or any future period by king, prince, potentate, or any other person except he be a mason. It was hoped that I would wear it with pleasure to myself and honor to the fraternity. The all-seeing eye is a symbol of watchfulness and is the eye of the grand architect. It is a symbol of his divine watchfulness and care of the universe. The all-seeing eye, whom the sun, moon, and stars obey, and under whose watchful care even comets perform their stupendous revolutions, pervades the inmost recesses of the human heart <clears throat> and rewards us according to our merits. The rays represent light. Freemasons are emphatically called the sons of light because they are entitled to be in possession of the true meaning and knowledge of this symbol. It is, in fact, the first of all symbols presented to the initiate and continues to be presented to him in various forms throughout his Masonic career. But his light not only came from God, it also makes man's way clear before him. So it is employed to signify moral truth. The dove in early masonry was a symbol of Noah's messenger. In ancient symbolism, the dove represented purity and innocence and was often seen bearing the olive branch. The constellation of seven six-pointed stars in masonry represents the seven liberal arts and sciences. They are grammar, rhetoric, logic, arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. The six-pointed star is a symbol of divine providence and is the star of David or shield of David. This starry deck heaven is where all good masons hope at last to arrive by aid of that theological ladder which Jacob in his vision saw extending from earth to heaven, the three principal rounds of which are denominated faith, hope, and charity, which admonishes us to have faith in God, hope in immortality, and charity towards all mankind. The greatest of these is charity, for our faith may be lost in sight, hope ends in fruition, but charity extends beyond the grave through the boundless realm of eternity. The sun, as a source of material light, reminds the mason of that intellectual light of which he is in constant search. The worshipful master, who rules and governs his lodge, is said to be the symbol of the rising sun in the east. The sun, therefore, is a symbol of sovereignty, the hieroglyphic of royalty, and signifies absolute authority. 
As the sun rules the day and the moon governs the night, so does the worshipful master rule and govern the lodge. These symbols in masonry are known as the lesser lights. The three great lights in masonry are the Holy Bible square and compasses. The Holy Bible is dedicated to the service of God because it is the ineffable gift of God to man, and on it we obligate our brethren. The square to the worshipful master because it is the proper Masonic emblem of his office, and the compasses to the craft because, by a due attention to their use, we are taught to circumscribe our desires and keep our passions within due bounds towards all mankind, especially a brother Mason. Here are the pillars of the porch of King Solomon's temple. King Solomon did not simply erect them as ornaments to the temple, but memorials of God's repeated promises of support to His people of Israel. Boaz, the Latin name of the left pillar, means in strength. The right pillar, Jacob, means God will establish, which signifies when combined the message in strength God will establish His house in Israel. And thus were the Jews in passing through the porch to the temple. Daily reminded of the abundant promises of God, and inspired with confidence in His protection and gratitude for His many acts of kindness to His holy, to His chosen people. The globes on the left represents Earth; that on the right, Heaven. The outer pillars of the porch are called the pillars of Enoch. Enoch, fearing that the principles of the arts and sciences might be lost, erected two pillars. One of marble to resist fire, the other of brass to resist water. On each, he engraved all the knowledge which he feared would be lost. The, the globes represent unity, peace, and plenty. These pillars also support the rainbow, which is sometimes associated with the holy royal arch. It is called the arch of heaven and is symbolic of the architectural arch. The mosaic pavement is a representation of the ground floor of King Solomon's temple. The mosaic pavement is emblematical of human life, checked with good and evil. The blazing star reminds us of that awe-inspiring period when the Almighty delivered the two tablets on stone containing the Ten Commandments to His faithful servant Moses on Mount Sinai. When the rays of His divine glory shone so bright. That none could be holding without fear and trembling. It also represents the sacred name of God as a universal spirit who enlivens our hearts, who purifies our reason, who increases our knowledge, and makes us wiser and better men. The ark is emblematical of that divine ark, which safely carries us over this tempest-tossed life. It is sometimes shown with the anchor, an emblem of a well-grounded hope. In a well-spent life, with hope, the anchor holds the soul sure and steadfast. The square within bounds is a symbol formed by four stonemason squares of equal arms superimposed one on the other to form a central cube. The square and cube are both significant symbols. The square is an emblem of morality or the strict performance of every duty. The square teaches us to regulate our conduct before God and man. The forty-seventh problem of Euclid's first book of geometry contained a mathematical theorem so complex that when Pythagoras solved the problem, he exclaimed, "Eureka!" which signifies, "I have found it." It has been adopted as the symbol of a past master. It teaches masons to be general lovers of the arts and sciences. The working tools of an entered apprentice mason are the 24-inch gauge and common gavel. The 24-inch gauge is an instrument made use of by operative masons to measure and lay out their work. But we, as brain accepted masons, are taught to use it for the more noble and glorious purpose of dividing our time. It being divided into 24 equal parts is emblematical of the 24 hours of the day. Which we are taught to divide into three equal parts, whereby are found eight hours for the service of God and a distressed worthy brother, eight for our usual vocations and eight for refreshment and sleep. 
The common gavel is an instrument made use of by operative masons to break off the corners of rough stones, the better to fit them to the builder's use. But we, as free and accepted masons, are taught to use it for the more noble and glorious purpose of divesting our hearts and consciences of the vices and superfluities of life, thereby fitting our minds as living stones for that spiritual building, that house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The plumb is an instrument made use of by operative masons to try perpendiculars, the square to square their work, and the level to prove horizontals. But we, as free and accepted masons, are taught to use them for more noble and glorious purposes. The plum admonishes us to walk uprightly in our several stations before God and man, squaring our actions by the square of virtue, ever remembering that we are traveling upon the level of time towards that undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. The trowel is an instrument made use of by operative masons to spread the cement which unites the building into one common mass. But we, as free and accepted masons, are taught to use it for the more noble and glorious purpose of spreading the cement of brotherly love and affection. That cement which unites us into one sacred band or society of friends and brothers, among whom no contention should ever exist, but that noble contention, or rather emulation, of who best can work and best agree. The setting mall in operative masonry is used for setting stones, that is, by tapping them to a firm seat in the mortar, by urging them sideways into place. It is considered by some to be a symbol of untimely death. The coffin, containing the remains of a deceased friend and brother, reminds the Masons that we are in charge, that we are the custodians of a great heritage passed along to us in the story of the Hermetic legend. The sprig of acacia is a symbol of the immortality of the soul like the flower which cometh forth and is cut down, reminds us of the transitory nature of human life. The beehive is an emblem of industry. It teaches masons that we came into this world rational and intelligent beings. So should we be industrious ones. The sword, pointing to a naked heart, demonstrates that sooner or later, justice will overtake us and that although our thoughts, words, and actions may be hidden from the eyes of man, they are not hidden to the all-seeing eye. The tassel consists of a cord with tassels on end. It represents the mystic tie, that bond which unites men of diverse opinions into one sacred band of friends and brothers. In closing, the ceremonies and lectures in symbolic masonry beautifully illustrate this all-engrossing subject. And the conclusion that we arrive at is that youth, properly directed, leads us to honorable and virtuous maturity, and that the life of man, regulated by morality, faith, and justice, will be rewarded at its final hour by the prospect of eternal bliss. And he who hears from his master the approving language, well done, good and faithful servant, Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joys of thy Lord.